What's going on, people? This big ball of fire in the sky that we here in the Northeast haven't seen for a long, long time sure feels good. Happy spring 2019 to each and every one of you. This is another Hajimoto production, and we're, today we're going to talk about pellets and hunting pellets uh, performance and how much energy they'll displace. This is not a new topic, but most of you that follow me in the forums know that I've been commenting that I'm working on a slug comparison video. That being said, before I move out of the pellets, I wanna make sure that I cover them thoroughly. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this ballistic gelatin, which is the 20%, and the overall length of this, my, here's what I'm thinking of doing, guys. We have the JSB Hades. We have the JSB Ultra Shock. I have the H&N Hunter, the H&N Hunter Extreme, the Skanko Ultra, and last but not least, the very affordable Crossman Premier. Now, with that many pellets and with this face, if we look at the surface area of this face, this is the surface area that I have to deal with. So I have to try to get a representation in a square that big. So I put the target at about 25 yards away. And here's my thought. My think and here's my hope is that I'll only go about four inches into this block. So if I only come in four inches, I can do one set from this side as for low power and then spin it around and do a set at high power. That's the plan. We'll see how it works out. I mean, these pellets could twist and turn going through the gel and destroy the next path for me. I don't know, I'm gonna wing it and see how it works. What I'm gonna do guys is here's the setup. I'm gonna have a high-speed camera looking at the ballistic gel at 240 frames a second. I'm gonna have a camera like this that is looking onward closer to the block so we can see the point of impact and we can see the accuracy of the pellet. And then downrange, where I'll be set up at the bench, I'll have a camera behind me that shows them as they go through the chronograph. Understand that this is a very complicated scenario because all those pellets that I named off all have different weights, every one of them. So it's not fair to fly a 25.39 at 800 feet per second and compare that against what the impact and kinetic energy transfer is going to be comparing it to a 15.89 grain pellet. So this is going to be a bit up in the air for me guys. I think accuracy is key. So whatever accuracy a, Diab a Diabolo or Diablo style pellet, that wasped waste pellet, they fly typically around 880 to 890 feet per second. That's their sweet spot. So I'm going to try to do what I call the low setting at that speed. Then I'm gonna crank it up and try to get them, if I can, close to 1,000, maybe 950 feet per second. That'll be the high side. And we can compare and see what happens with the expansion of each one of those. That's the plan, guys. I hope it works out. Let's see how it goes. Okay, guys, the first up is the Crossman Premier, 14.3 grain, ballistic block, top left corner. We're going to shoot at the target first to make sure I'm on, and then the second shot's going in the ballistic gel. Next up, 
uh, JSB Hades. Top row, middle. Okay guys, this time Skanko, 16.66, top right corner of the ballistic gel, second attempt, I'm trying to get it around 880 feet. Okay guys, up next H&N Hunters. These are going to be shot at the second row, first dot, and these are 18.21 grain. First shot's just gonna be an aim shot to make sure I'm on. shooting at the ballistic gel. Why that went down to 720 feet per second, I don't know. Okay guys, next up H&N Hunter Extremes, the middle dot, the second row, these are 18.52 grain. First shot's going to be to aim at the target to make sure that we're good, then I'll hit the ballistic gel.
Okay guys, the last in the series, what I call the low speed, are gonna be the JSB Ultras, the Ultra Shocks, bottom left hand corner. First is going to be a aim shot, second will be into the gel. We're just going for the gel. Okay guys, this is my summary and final thoughts. As we all knew going into this, the higher the velocity, the more the expansion rate of the lead. So it's not a fair comparison, like I said from the very beginning, to uh, compare a very lightweight pellet against a heavy pellet going at the same speed. They're just going to expand differently. Um, so in here, I tried my best to get those to go off at around somewhere between 850 and 900. And as you've seen, that for whatever the reason I couldn't get them to fly consistent and if you look at the chronograph to prior to the shot you'll see that I took a, a initial shot to make sure that I was within the power range which was within that 850 to 900 but for some reason when I pulled the trigger the speeds went anywhere from 720 to over a thousand feet per second and, and I just couldn't understand why so when we're talking about these results let's just talk about the results as to what they are um, and I'm gonna start saying number one um, and obviously the two top two winners of expansion rate were the two fastest flying pellets so there's really no surprise there so number one was the Skenko Ultra Shock at 16.66 grains, it flew at 1,068 feet per second, hit the gel at somewhere around 42 foot-pounds of energy. Total depth of the, of the penetration was 2.2, but its final depth was at two inches. So it was the most shallow going in, and if you looked at the distor distortion of the lead, it was probably the best at 71%. The Hades came in at 33% expansion, and it also was flying close to 1,000 at 983, followed up by the Hunter, 28% expansion. It only flew at 720. So if we take the low speed and look at what it did, in my opinion, I think the Hunter overall did the best. Um, Skenko was going pretty fast, but the Hunter, at that speed, to get almost 30% expansion, that once that's up around 850, I'll show you some results on that, and I think you'll be impressed. Uh, next coming in is the JSB Ultra Shock, and the only reason I gave that fourth place, even though it's equal in expansion, was because it hit the wood block as it passed through, so it's really not fair. It wasn't just a gel impact. It hit the wood uh, when it came out the backside, which kind of expanded it more. The Hunter Extremes um, also flew at through, uh, 836 feet per second, around 10 percent expansion and the last with absolutely hardly no deformation at all um, was the crossman premiere there was no deforming of the pellet in any way the thing pretty much came out the same way it went in because it's so hard um, what i want to do now is i want to show a photo of the top three that were the top three expanders um, and what they looked like at almost 1,100 feet per second. Each one flown at almost 1,100 feet per second. Now the range in grains here goes from 15.89 to 6 uh, to 18.21, so is a good range there. Um, and I think, as you can see by this photo, there's some huge expansion on those three. So those are the top three performers, as far as I'm concerned, low or high. They will be the best. So that's all I've got, guys. I wish, uh, I wish I actually was more consistent with the shots on this. But either way, you see how they performed with the data given, meaning this rate of the speed the, was the variable that I couldn't keep under control. But the medium we shot into was the same across all of them. And you got to see what it did at that speed. 
So that's going to wrap it up for me, guys. I appreciate you watching the video. Uh, leave your comments down below. Take it easy, and we'll see you on the next one.